welcome to DC Today. My name is Brian Seitel, and it's great to be with you all again today. It is Wednesday, November the 8th, and another technically positive day in markets, although not hugely positive, and, and futures coming into this morning were, were just as quiet. Markets actually traded up in the morning. They traded down a little bit through midday. Then there was some comments from Federal Reserve Jay Powell um, at a conference uh, with some opening remarks that were perceived to be a little bit more dovish. And you got a little bit of uh, basis points out of some of the yield curve and, and a little bit more in, uh, in stocks and risk assets <clears throat> following that. So, but all in all, we basically closed flat on the day. The Dow is actually down 40 points. The S&P and the NASDAQ were up 10, you know, point, one tenth of 1%. So pretty quiet day. The 10 year yield dropped five basis points again. That was sort of after some of those comments from, from Jay Powell. Um, so technically, we're, we're sort of extending our November rally, and uh, I wrote this in there, but we sort of we came into November with uh, uh, pretty dismal internal market metrics. The About 17%, only about 17% of the S&P 500 was showing or reflecting a positive trailing three-month return. So we, we were kind of due for, for, um, for, for, for a bounce, and then we also got, again, the Fed you know, holding rates steady. And as much telegraphing that uh, they're, they're basically done with their rate tightening campaign at this point. And so markets are feeling a little better. The, uh, the steam is coming out a little bit of this thing, though. Um, so I don't want to get readers too excited. I mean, the um, internals of the market have still been uh, very top heavy in, in the weightings of the S&P right now. The two biggest holdings of it, um, which is Microsoft and Apple, basically make up almost 15% of the S&P 500. So it's 14.6% weighting. And to put that in perspective, the market cap of each one of those companies is the same size as the FTSE 100 in the UK, the CAC index in France, and the DAX index in Germany, just one company. So we're really pretty top heavy in, in our markets on the S&P. And, and part of which way those companies trade is where the index trades. So is, is what it is there. Um, the Dow was down, you know, call it 8% last year, and it's up almost 3% this year. So still negative over two years. The S&P is still negative over two years, and the NASDAQ is still negative over two years, and the bond market is negative over two years. So we're just kind of getting through this period of time um, in, uh, in, in markets. Um, and again, this rally has been nice in the month of November. Um, I put a couple of just little stats in today's DCT about DC Today. Um, the relationship between China and the U.S. Uh, has continued to um, uh, evolve, I guess I'll use, use the word, but as far as the dependence on one another, them making things for less than we can make those things, and then us buying those things, uh, which is exporting uh, or importing deflation, basically, and then them taking that money that they're earning from the U.S. and then recycling it back into U.S. treasuries to keep our currencies really tethered and also to earn interest payments to sort of finance all their construction. That paradigm has played out at this point in a big way. We're now importing more from Mexico, for example, than we are from China. Um, and it's, it's that relationship hasn't been that way since 2003. This is sort of following NAFTA and uh, all those incentives to, to, uh, to trade with uh, Canada and Mexico. Um, so, so that relationship continues to change. And I don't know that necessarily is a bad thing. Um, frankly, for either country, if, if China was attempting to change to a consumption based economy, this is helping them do that. You know, they don't have um, the U.S. as their their sole sort of buyer of, of things they're making. Their economy is slowing. And so we're seeing that. Um, and I think some of the energy pricing coming down a little bit is is because of that. Demand is is lower um, in parts of the world like China and, and frankly, potentially in the U.S., not meaningfully, though, uh, yet. Um, uh, the comments out of uh, the uh, out of Jay Powell today at the forum that he was at were more around. This is like the centennial for the Research and Statistics Institute. Uh, we're more around having flexibility in the models that they use, um, in how dynamic the U.S. economy is, and how it's evolved, and those types of things. I agree with him that you should have dynamic, uh, flexible models to try to calculate a dynamic and flexible economy. Um, the way it's perceived, though, is instead of sort of a dogmatic 2% target on inflation, maybe that means that they're willing to accept some other number, or maybe it means they'll have some flexibility. And that's kind of why you got some of the dovish tone in, in, in some markets um, on the day. Um, 
But all, all in all, I mean, I, I'll, I'll take it. Look, if, if, uh, if we have a longest win streak here in two years going on, uh, we had sort of a dismal showing last month, and now we're leading into November, starting off on the right foot. We have peak rates, basically, and we still have the economy expanding. Those aren't bad things. And so volatility today was down again, 2.5% on the VIX. We're at sort of the mid-14s now. Historically, that's kind of going towards a low area. And that's that's good. That means fear and volatility is coming out of markets. And I think the bias, frankly, is to the upside. For at least that's what the market is telling us as of right now. Um, tomorrow we have uh, some more comments from Powell. He's at a, a conference, a, a panel at the IMF, the Inter International Monetary Fund. Um, so we'll have some comments from him. I don't know that it's going to be anything other than status quo at this point. Fed futures, by the way, are basically showing um, with like an 86% probability that they're done raising rates, to put it in perspective. So I don't know what else you could say that would change that at this point. Um, we have jobless claims tomorrow. We have uh, a GOP debate for anybody that's still watching, <laughs> frankly, with the outcome that we sort of know um, already. But that debate is tonight, so I'll be watching that, paying attention. I hope you will be too. And uh, with that, I shall let you go on the evening. I hope you enjoyed reading DC today as I did writing it. I will be with you tomorrow on it as well. And I'll make sure that there's some fun, neat things in there for you. So with that, I'll say good night and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.